Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank everybody that came out here tonight. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm going to start getting sad if I get all teary eyed on big sap. Um, but I, so it's hard to look over you because I really do appreciate the nice words. I've got a lot of emails and things said, emails and letters sent to me, and phone calls. And, and uh, you know, when, when I think about it, and my wife and I have talked about this over and over and over again, it's just a coaching job but it's a big part of my life and a big part of my family's life and my players' life. The guys that are here that have played for me, I'm very appreciative of. Um, I can't sit and defend every criticism of me. It wouldn't be, it's an impossibility to do that. Um, can you hear me? And so I'm not gonna try to do that. Uh, screw that. Listen. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, no, it works. Is it, it works? Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna try to take every little thing and, and and defend myself against it. But I, I keep going back to sitting in civics class, which I love teaching. I'm as passionate about teaching as I am about coaching. I love it. You're, many of you here, oh my God, everybody here, it's like I've had your kid in class at one time or another. And they tell you, I mean, I'm passionate about the teaching and the coaching. And I'm teaching about the Constitution. I don't get, mean to get that way with you too deep, but I feel like I tell the kids about the Constitution that it was set up to protect the minority from the majority, to protect the soft-spoken, the you know the unspoken, the stick up for other people. And in a weird sense, an ironic sense, I feel like it's the other way around in this instance. I, I truly feel like it is a small minority imposing its will on a majority of people. Yes, me, but the, the people that are here supporting me, the kids that um, are, are stopping me in the hall, like Chris Lutz said they were stopping his brothers years ago. And I, I just, I, I think about that a lot, and, and I feel like that's what's being done here. Um, I guess that's, in a way, how I'll defend myself. Um, there's three things I just wanted to speak on, um, and, and I feel in a way that I'm almost here in a disciplinary action, and I know that school board members, you probably don't think that, and you didn't make me feel like that, Dan or Tim. It's not that I feel I'm in a disciplinary action, but I feel like I could be sitting here defending myself, and I don't think I've done anything wrong. And it's a hard feeling, it's, it's, it's tough to be here and, and be standing in front of you and not want to defend every little thing and spend an hour explaining it to you. Nobody wants that, but it is how I feel, like I'm, like I'm on a probationary period sitting here in front of you. Um, three things I want to speak on. Um, the time put in. You know, my wife and I were talking about it, and she said, you know, when I first started coaching, my, my, my oldest kid, my daughter was born, and in my mind, I thought, I hope I coach them about 10 years when they're older. But the opportunity was there, and, and I really wanted it. And, you know, there's times that, that she's at home with three kids, and it's a Tuesday night, and I'm at Aiken, and I get back at 11. And, you know, I'm sure there's times she wishes that I was, I was home with her instead of um, out coaching. Actually, she might be happy I'm not there. <laughs> um, but, you know, she says, she goes, you balance everything so well. She goes, you know, and it was, it was her that said, you've got the, the coaching, the teaching, and your family. And I looked at it like, no, there's two things. Coaching and teaching is one thing, my family is the other. Like all of us here, my family is the most important thing, there's no doubt about it. But I'm almost that close on the, on the teaching and the coaching. And, and she goes, you do such a great job of balancing that. And that's what I want to impress upon you is, you know, I'm there at the elementary levels, I'm there at the high school levels, the junior high, summer league, and in a way, um, I gave the school board members a, a letter kind of giving all of that. And I don't know how they took it, I didn't mean it like, here you go, shove it in your face. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting in the time, I've got a balance, and I think a really good balance, I'm able to pull it off, and I don't know how many coaches uh, really could to the extent that I do. Um, I, well, my coaching abilities. Here's something that I was talking with, with Tim Geisler, and, and we had a good talk, and one thing that was brought up that I want to address, and I've kind of seen it, uh, I tried to stay away from looking at Facebook or any of that kind of stuff, but I did do a little dabbling looking at WCMP. But, you know, this idea that, that Richter's a really nice guy. He's a great guy. I don't know if these coaches would say that, but they might. But he's a, he's a great guy. And this feeling like, he's a real great guy, but not the greatest coach. And I'm like, why? You know, wh why is that? How is it all of a sudden that being a great guy is this label that I have to defend myself on? When I was talking with Tim about it, he made a great question. Tim was a great question. He said to me, you know, you're a good guy. People.